Hi, I'm Sophia Bernardi, mindset and business coach supporting ambitious new and rising coaches to master their mindset, create an aligned and profitable strategy and grow a six-figure business and beyond using the rising coach method. I built a half a million dollar business by the age of 24 and in this podcast, I will teach you the psychology, strategy and energetics to do the same. Let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to yet another episode of Rising Coaches with Sophia Bernardi. I am so excited you are here, and today's episode is going to be none other than amazing because I'm interviewing my beautiful friend, Shani Timms. She lives in Byron Bay, and she is the founder of Figment, her business. She is a designer, design mentor, and efficiency fanatic. She's super inspiring, and this conversation was probably one of my more favorite conversations I've had on this podcast because we dove deep onto so many different topics that have supported not just her, but also me to grow our businesses. We have a lot of crossovers. We work with similar mentors. We have very similar beliefs and everything in between. So we talk about human design and graphic design and relationships and energy and mindset and strategy and money and alignment and freedom and everything in between. And you are going to love this episode. So a little bit of background on Shani, even though she absolutely will be sharing this with you, but she has spent the last 12 years of her life weaving in and out of design in many forms and has really developed a tailored skill set to support her clients to build an incredible brand. We talk about the power of brand and how it supported both of our businesses and how it supports her clients' businesses and things to consider and mistakes that are often made when it comes to uh, coming up with your unique personal brand. She has a very unique lens of on how she does this. She's not just your standard graphic designer that just says, here's your color palette, go enjoy. She really anchors into your values and what's important to you and the vision you you have and who you are as a human being and really creates a unique personal brand for you or with you uh, based on that information, which is just so, so cool. I've referred a lot of my clients to her and I it's one of those things where I wish I had found her earlier when I needed support with branding, but the next time I need a full revamp, I know where I'm going. Uh, she is incredible. She's also grown her business to six figures and that is something big that we speak about so that you can see how she's been able to do that so you can do the same. So I hope that you enjoy this episode with Shani. I absolutely loved interviewing her and I can't wait for you to get this into your ears and see how it can change your life. Enjoy. Hey Shani, how are you today? Hello Sophia, I'm so good. It's so good to be here with you. I know um, this has been a long time coming. I'm so excited. We've obviously been in each other's world for quite some time now and we have lots of um, mutual connections and things like that. So this will be a beautiful conversation. I'm so excited. I know. I can't wait. So um, before we kick off, I would love for you to share a little bit about who you are and what you do just so people can get an idea of all of the amazing things yeah. and, um, you know, how you got into digital design and, and then specifically like in the coaching industry. Amazing. Well, um, my name's Shani Timms for anyone who doesn't know me. And um, yeah, it's such a pleasure to be here and chatting with you today. Uh, so I... I have a rich tapestry of of my career and I don't know how much you want me to go in, but I think it really like sets the foundation of kind of like where I am today. So, um, you know, and I know we'll get into human design later, but I'm a three, five in human design. So it means that I have taste tested all these different careers and really built my, my own business based on my unique skills. So I started in I started in interior design. I you know I studied graphic design at uni. I went down those sort of rabbit holes, and then I moved into um, you know a catering business. For God's sake, I had an online e-commerce business, and then you know I finally found myself in a business that really suits my energy. It suits my skills, um, and it suits the person that I am. So it's funny because if you had asked me, you know, ten years ago if I would end up in website design, graphic design, I would have said, absolutely no, you know, that's not my thing. But it's funny how the universe works, right? It'll circle back certain things. And I think for me, gaining the experience of 
running a bricks and mortar, you know, business, running a catering business with, you know, high overheads and a team, um, you know, running an e-com business, you know, doing interior design, each part of my, I call it my rich tapestry of my career has really like um, given me the skills that I need for the, for this part of my career and this part of my life. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers your question at all, but it's kind of been this whole journey of sort of like unfolding to this business I have now, which is Figment. Mm-hmm. And um, and so Figment, for anyone who doesn't know my business, uh, I do branding websites and creative for heart and soul led entrepreneurs. And it's, it's a very creative and um, intuitive led business, which I think is quite different from everything else that's out there. Um, and I really love, you know, helping creatives such as you, Sophia, and just business owners who are really choosing to do business differently and choosing to do business their way. That is something that really lights me up. Um, so yeah, but I don't know if that gives you a little bit of a, an outline. <laughs> no, it really does. And I'm so glad that you touched on those aspects of your journey, because I really believe that everything we have done like in the past has supported us to get to right where we are in this moment. And so whilst you could argue that uh, running a bricks and mortar business or even being in the hospitality industry has, you know, not correlated to where you are now, I really believe that it has. It it gives you so many Mm. skill sets. Like, again, that's another crossover we have. I definitely, I didn't own a hospitality business, but I worked in hospo for a long time. And the the work ethic, the long hours, the, you Mm. know, the uh, relationship building, the being nice to people, no matter what kind of thing, like all of that really has served me on my journey. And I can think of things in my past that have also supported me um, in the coaching industry. Like I used to have a, well, it's still here, but I had a YouTube channel where I would just film videos because I loved it. Like no selling anything, like just for three years, would just do it as a hobby. And I can now see, and I often forget this part of my journey, but that's three years Mm -hmm. of practicing, Mm -hmm putting myself out there, filming videos, talking to no one. And I Mm. I forget about that, but that's totally supported me now why I have the confidence online. And I recognize not everyone starts with confidence when they start their business because they've never had to speak to a camera before or, you know, speak to themselves. And so um, it all Mm. plays a role. So thank you for sharing that. It totally and, does, yeah. Yeah. And what you do now, um, you know, supporting, you know, female soul-led entrepreneurs and creatives, I think is so important. And it's one of those things where I wish I found you a little earlier because I yeah. did so <laughs> much money on branding yeah. and didn't always have the best experience. And, you know, as you know, mm. I've referred a lot of my clients to you and so forth because I think what you do is incredible. And so if anyone ever Thank needs you. brand support, website support, you need to go to Shani. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that is so, that's so beautiful. Thank you. And and I do think as well, like um, so many people in our industry have had a real bad taste in their mouth from working with creatives, working with designers where they felt like they haven't been seen as part of the process. A lot of clients come to me and they're like, I'm really hesitant of of trusting another designer because I felt like my designs hadn't been properly done or properly translated, or I feel like my essence hadn't been captured. And I think that's, that's a real part of my process, which what I have introduced is really like tapping into the energy of the business. And I know that sounds quite woo woo and spiritual, but I I truly believe that our business isn't us. I believe it's, it's something that's come to co-create with us and we need to involve it in every part of the process. And, um, and that's what I'm really passionate about is just helping like solid entrepreneurs feel seen in their branding and, and really create branding. That's an actual essence of them and their business. And, and really like, that's the thing that's going to magnetize the clients. Yes. Your energy. Yes. Your magic. But also like, I like to think of your branding as this like perfume that's out in the world. That's attracting the right people into your circles and your world and your work. And, and really, I think that's, that's the magic of it really. Yeah, I've changed my brand so many times over the last four years and I've definitely noticed Mm -hmm. like an up level within myself and, you know, the financial return as I've up leveled my brand. So I can definitely recognize the the power and the importance it plays both for myself internally, but then also that like how, how my messaging and my story and my mission is like then Mm. showcased externally. Like it, it kind of showcases 
the quality of your business yes. and all of these sorts of things. So I would love to hear though, from your perspective, why is having a brand so important mm. when it comes to either starting, growing or scaling your business? And what are the, like, what are some of the key things that people should consider with their brand? And you know, what yeah. are some of the common mistakes you see? Like, tell us all of the things when it comes to branding. Okay. Well, the first thing that came up when I'm like, there's so much to this. So tell me <laughs> I if I go too far off track. But the first thing that really came through when you were talking and, and I, and and I really felt this, this with you, Sophia, when you when you put your work out there is like every time we we rebrand or we create an identity, it's almost we're creating a brand for the future self that we're stepping into. Yes, so exactly. what I find is so many people is like they're creating the brand with the vision and the future in mind. And they actually there's a bit of this, you know, quantum leap in a way or this big step up to kind of step into this brand. So having a beautiful branding, having amazing logo, having Instagram templates, it all creates like this confidence leap that we need to step into this new version of self, this new version of business, this new identity. And I, I know that you probably experienced this as well. When we have this new branding, we're like, oh my God, I'm going to share my message. I want to share my yes. work. I'm getting myself out there. I want to be seen. And that's why I think it's so important creating an authentic and aligned brand because when it actually feels like a true ref reflection of us in our business, we are so more inclined to put our work out there and post our new offers and post our new course or our podcast because we're proud of our brand and what we've created. Mm. So there's so there's so many different things with brand as well. Like, you know, having a recognizable brand, it it, it increases like um customer recognition. So say for example, your color is green, right? Everyone knows that when they see this beautiful sage green post, that is Sophia, that is her work, her magic, her wisdom coming out in the world. So having a signature brand color is so important when it comes to brand. And you'll see that I've just done a complete rebrand yes. with, with my brand. And it was quite a scary process because back to that sort of confidence leap I was talking before, I've really been asked to step into this new version of self, this bigger, brighter, bolder, you know, version of self. And my existing brand didn't feel like it was it. So in order for me to make that jump, I'm like, okay, first step is unlocking what the brand wants to look like to hold this future vision of me. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, I then almost felt like I could then leap into that new future vision of me because I had the the confidence, oh, sorry, the, the brand like supported this this whole new leap. So I, I'm not sure there's, there's so many things we could pull on there, but is there anything that you sort of wanted to, any paths you wanted to go down? Well, I just can't tell you how much I agree with you in regards to um, your brand supports you to step into that next level version of yourself. And personally, when, because I love that you shared this as well, like, your brand is not meant to just like stay the same forever as you evolve, as you know, things shift in your, in your life. Of course your brand evolves with it. And so it's normal to go through rebrands. And the next time I'm going through a major one, yeah. I know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> I'm but, here for your um, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But something yeah. I love is like, whenever I've been, um, you know, looking to tweak things or up-level my brand a little bit, I go and look on like the accounts and you're one of them that I'm like most mm. inspired by. And I ask myself like, what am I magnetized towards about this? What do I love? Like, yeah. is it is it the colors that go together? Is it the, does it like, how does it make me feel? Does it look really professional, really clean? And mm. it's so much fun when you are able to really express your personality um, yeah. in your, in your brand. And I see mm. how it just builds a lot of authority. Like, when I look back on what my, my, you can't even call it branding, but what it looks like when yeah. I first started my business, like it was just one color and like aerial font. Like there was absolutely yeah. nothing to it. And <laughs> look, you've got to start somewhere, but it's so cool to see how it's evolved over time as I've evolved. And um, it very much correlates like as I've grown, and like, so is the brand. So I think they go hand in yeah. hand together so much. So thanks for sharing the importance on that. And like, what are some of the, I, I don't even know if mistakes is the right word, but what are yeah. some of the things you see kind of go wrong when it comes to creating a brand? So um, so it's funny that you were sort of saying that you like to get inspiration because um, I think that that's such an important part. And I would say, and not saying that it's a mistake by any parts, but what you did at all, but I would say that sometimes when we lean too much on what others are doing, mm. not saying you did this at all, but we can we can actually water down our like, 
potency and uniqueness yes. of our brand. And so um, a big part, a big part of my process is actually we do a visioning, a visioning process. So it's a guided visualization at the start of our journey together. And what we do is we actually tap into the energy of your business. We ask it questions, you know, we, we ask for symbology, shape, colors, you know, all of these sort of things um, just to help us really unpack like what our unique business identity wants to look like. Because this is the thing, right, Sophia, so many, there's so many beautiful brands out there. Like, you know, there's amazing blue brands, green brands, whatever, cream black. Does it actually represent us and what we're trying to create? Like, Mm -hmm. honestly, we could pick anything. This is like when you're designing a house, it's like you could pick any color wall, any furniture, but what is like a true reflection of you and your identity? So I would say that's probably like a, I wouldn't say a mistake, but just something to be careful of. Like first off the bat is like, what are you doing because you like, and what are you doing because it's actually a representative of you and your brand? And honestly, when I see the green, I'm like, that is so Sophia. I'm like, this is so your brand. So, so you've done everything amazing. And I think another, um, Another mistake or something to look out for is is we t- we tend to get sick of our brand. We're seeing all the posts, you know, we're seeing the same color go out, we're seeing the same fonts. But what I'm saying is like the moment that you get sick of your brand is the moment people become familiar with your brand. Mm-hmm. So get out of your own way. Like and I'm saying not you specifically, but like as in we need to get out of our own way with the brand. Like when we create when we create, you know, epic templates and stuff like yes we're probably sick of it because we've done a hundred posts in this exact same template but honestly your audience is only just familiarizing themselves with your brand so when you're sick of it be like awesome I'm doing a fucking good job I have created an established brand I know people are like recognizing the work that I'm doing Mm. and then And then I would also say uh, um, another, I'm just trying to think of a third mistake because there's so many different ones, like, you know, changing your fonts too frequently, um, you know, not having consistency through, you know, Instagram, website, you know, email, all of that. Um, But uh, yeah, look, honestly, the thing that I drive home so many times is like, come back to your unique essence, like fuck what everyone else is doing come back to like your uniqueness and what you're here to do and create, like what your business has come to you specifically for, then create from there. Because that is when you are your most magnetic is when you've tapped into your unique energy and essence. Because when we're, when we're playing around with what everyone else is doing or all that sort of stuff, it's like you're, you're watering down the amazingness that is you and your brand. I'm like, fucking Mm. go in, like actually tap into that, to that vision and then create from there. And mm. I kind of want to like, so how I ch- I sort of channeled my new brand is um, I sat in ceremony about two, would have been about two, two or three months ago. And like what came through, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, this is, this is big. And I'm like, I, I don't even know how this is going to come out or come through and if it's going to land with people. But I, I, I got the, the essence, I got that download and I just had to run with it and create, create with it. Um, which was kind of big and scary. So anyway, they're all my mistakes and a little bit of extra on the side. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So what I'm really hearing from all of this is that you can use other people as like inspiration to like even get an idea of like what are the fucking options, Um, but then Mm. also really coming back to, okay, what's my unique spin on this? Like I I can see what I'm magnetised towards and what I really love, what what ignites like passion and excitement in me? What is me and how can I make yes. that unique and clear is what I'm really hearing. And then on top of that, it's like, it's okay to be almost bored with your brand and the consistency yeah. is super powerful. And like a really good example for people, I think to really anchor into this is like, look at Apple. Apple is like yeah. one of the biggest companies across the globe. Do you see them changing their logo every five minutes? Absolutely not. I don't remember the last time yeah. it even changed. It's always been that Apple Sure, It's, it's uh, gotten more modern and simple as mm. time has gone over. I think it used to be rainbow or something, but they, they've really it's just iconic. stuck with the, yeah, they've, they've stuck with yeah. the whole thing. Like I just need to say Apple and you don't think of like the fruit Apple, you think of the company Apple. It's like yeah. they, they've really nailed it when it comes to marketing. And when you think of the key words that Apple has developed, it's like modern, simplicity, bold, simple, mm. Like clean. You can think of, yeah. yeah, like you, all these words mm. come to mind because they're consistent in it. And that's why they're so recognizable. And you could, we could talk about this yeah. for hours with every brand out there. But I think that's, you know, 
they are succeeding and are so recognizable mm. because they haven't changed it a billion times over, only yeah. refined it. And I'd love to just add another one for like personal brands, Sophia, because I know you work with a lot of amazing female, you know, entrepreneurs and coaches. And I think one thing is just not putting yourself out there. Like you, you know, in essence, like we are a part of our brand. And I find so many, uh, you know, people in my world, they're really afraid to put their face to their brand. And I honestly think that is a big mistake because think about how we're engaging your profile is. We go in, we see Sophia's face, like we know her, we trust her, we love her work. When you don't attach your face to your brand as a personal brand, it's really hard for people to build rapport. It's it's hard for people to trust you and you're also not pairing like your wisdom that you're putting out in the world with your face. So you're not building that like next level brand recognition and trust. So mm. I just wanted to add in that one as well. I agree. I agree. Like I almost instantly trust someone if their brand speaks to me, like I resonate with it. And mm. then obviously if their messaging then aligns with that further, like I instantly trust them. Like they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing because of the brand. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've created a six figure business and I know that you travel quite a lot with your partner and everything like that. Um, mm. But I know that you're also a worker. You're not one of those types of people that's like, oh, I just sit here, do nothing. And it all just works out and comes to me. Like you absolutely practice what you preach. You've, you've worked and created this life um, and this business. And so I'm really curious for you to speak into this because I think it's so easy for uh, coaches, especially coaches starting out where comparison is a little bitch and you hear people say mm. like, oh, I've got a six figure business. I travel the world. I do this. Life's amazing. But you and I both know the reality behind the scenes of what it often looks like to actually get there. And so I would love, yeah. like, I'm all about transparency. It's one of my biggest values. Like what mm. has that journey looked like to get to six figures? What does the work life balance look like? Would love to hear it mm. all. So I'm trying to think where I start with this because I think like <laughs> one thing that so many entrepreneurs and it's it's the key ingredient to success is time. Mm. And so often it is overlooked because people, when they start a business, they're, they're and amazing. I fully agree with, you know, setting big goals and going wild, but we need to give our dreams time because mm. with time comes experience. And on and honestly, when I when I started my business, if I had started earning six figures straight off the bat, doing five figure months, I would not have known how to handle it. I would have not known how to hold it. I would have not known how to what to do with my money. So really, like I, I really stress this in the, in you know my coaching work and when I'm speaking with my clients is like we don't want to rush things. We want to take we don't need to take our time, like let's work hard, but then also let's build a really solid baseline where our nervous system gets to grow as we grow our business. Because I'm sure you've had it, Sophia, where you've had a monster month and then you're like, holy fuck, how do I deal with this? How do I hold it? This is too big. Oh my God. We don't want to run a business where we're going, do, 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 where we have a, a monster month, where we have to drop down because our nervous system's fucked, where we have another monster month and we come back down because we've burnt out. So really, you know, I've I've suffered from burnout after burnout from previous businesses. When I started this business, I said, okay, I'm doing this business and I'm doing it my way. And a big part of my way was actually embedding rest. It was embedding travel. It was creating a work-life balance that um, I, sorry, my business was was working for me that I wasn't working for my business. So, you know, Blake, my partner, who I know that you've you've done work with as well, travel is like one of our number one priorities and our number one values is adventure and travel. So when we created these businesses, we were like, okay, we want to travel the world. We want to explore. We want to bring our businesses with us. So really from the get-go, I wanted to create a remote business. I wanted to create a business where I wasn't, you know, having to hire a monster team. I wasn't having to work crazy hours. And that has kind of been the foundation since then. So I've been in business, you know, two and a bit years in this business, two and a bit years. And um, it's just been amazing to really like test out what's possible. So, you know, we went to Thailand for six weeks over in um, December. That was our first mini trip of being like, okay, can we bring our business overseas with us? Does it drop our revenue? Does it, you know, drop the level of service that we give to our clients? And honestly, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. And a big fear that I had to move through was what are my clients going to think when I'm out there living my life, traveling the world? Are there, is there going to be a level of like, they don't trust my work? You know, 
that was a really big hoop that I had to sort of like move through was, um, no, like my service doesn't drop when I'm traveling. My, you know, my level of professionalism doesn't drop when I'm traveling. Um, and, and my clients don't care. They actually love that I'm going out and, you know, living my life and living my best life and traveling the world. And I really want to touch on like a big milestone, which was like um, reaching my biggest month when I, you know, was traveling in Europe, which was, you know, maybe a month ago now. And I had had my biggest month by a long mile when I was literally working about four hours a day and traveling the world with my partner just landed in my favorite place in the world, Barcelona. I was literally doing my PL the day before we got there. And I just said to Blake, I was like, holy shit, I've done it. Like I have literally, you know, made it made the goal that I, you know, set at the start of the year. So I think that was really a beautiful confirmation for me to be like, okay, you you actually can build your dream business. You can build a business where you can work from anywhere in the world and you can make good money while doing it. Mm. And I, I'm not sure if there's any threads on that that you want to pull. Like there's so many different avenues we can go down. Yeah, definitely. Like what I'm really hearing is that, well, you can have, you can have it all. You can create the life that you truly deserve and desire. And I think, and I'll speak, I'll ask you a question in a second that will dive mm. deeper on this. But what I'm really hearing is that that energetics component has been really powerful of like, actually the happier you are, the more fulfilled you are, the more alignment you are with your life and in your values, the um, more successful you actually become as a result. And so sometimes people have you know, this belief that they can't have it all or they can have this at the cost of this or, you know, mm. you know, the, the harder mm. you work, the more you work, the more money you make when it actually doesn't always have to be. Like it's not always about the the actions and the time but more uh, being a at a vibrational frequency yeah. match of what it is you desire and it sounds like when you mm. were at that, that's when it flowed and it worked because people, the thing is, is that like, people that maybe aren't as into energetics and don't really understand it. It's like, cause I was watching your journey and obviously I follow yeah. Blake as well. And you know, you can feel your happiness, your alignment and, and you living your best life. And all that does is magnetize people towards mm. you. They're like, I want that life, I, you know, that sort of stuff. And and I feel like that's, that's how it spreads. So the more you celebrate, the more you share, the more you acknowledge yeah. and, and the more like truly fulfilled you are, the more people feel that. Have you, I just. Interrupting this podcast episode quickly to talk to you about my program, Rise to Coach. Rise to Coach is a lifetime access, self paced, and money back guarantee program to help you start and make money as a coach or service provider. This is the online program where I'm gonna teach you the rock solid foundations you need from scratch and how to sign clients on repeat. This is perfect if you are time poor, you're on a budget or just starting out. I have done my very best to make Rise to Coach so extremely accessible so you can get everything you need in one place when you're just starting out. You get lifetime updates, you get a monthly live Q&A call in the Facebook community, you can also connect with with others and ask me questions any day you want in the Facebook community and I'll get back to you ASAP along with quarterly virtual workshops. There is so much support and accountability and depth in Rise to Coach and I'm so extremely proud of this program because it has helped so many people just starting out to create an aligned strategy to feel good and balanced and not lose their life in the process of growing and starting their business. So if this is calling you then I highly recommend you head to sophiarosebernardi.com slash rise to coach and join today. Have you, I just a question for you. Have you found that like your biggest month have correlated with the months where you've been most in alignment, happiest, you know, probably working least? Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I definitely think different stages of business require different aspects of you. So I find that my mm. first $10,000 month felt like the hardest it required actually a lot of work a lot of effort yeah overcoming a lot of mindset stuff and it felt quite hard but then once I reached that then mm. I never went under that again it's like I had cracked the code on how to do that and then it got easier and easier so Amazing. weirdly enough the more money I make the easier it feels like it, it gets easier so good as time goes on and um, yeah I don't know if you know who Denise Duffield Thomas is. She's like a, mm. she's like the money coach. I love like, her. <laughs> yeah, top coach in Australia, very well known. I was listening to one of, I don't actually follow her podcast, but someone sent me 
her episode. I love her books, so I've read her books. But one of her podcast episodes, she was breaking down how she had made $5 million a year, like where the actual, she's been very transparent about where that money goes, how much she actually keeps and everything. And there was one sentence she said that that I found very fascinating. And that is she says, Mm -hmm. it's easy to make $5 million. (laughs) I think for a lot of us who are not making $5 million, we'll be like, how the heck do you do that? That doesn't seem very easy. But Mm -hmm. I understand what she's saying at a smaller level in regards to maybe $10,000. Like, you know, um, that feels easy to me. And so I understand why she's saying that. She's just at such a a match for that, that now Mm -hmm. it feels easy. And I think it's so important to remember that, that like, you know, it's it's not like the the lead up to your first ten thousand dollar month, just as an example. It's that you're gonna have that experience every single time. It's like it's yeah. like learning to ride a bike. When you don't know how to ride, yeah, it's wobbly, it's hard, you're gonna fall down. But once you get it, now people probably mm-hmm. ride a bike and don't even think twice. Same with driving a car. I don't it's know if you ever nature. feel this. You're like, how yeah. long have I been driving for? I don't know. <laughs> oh my any, god. You know, it's the same how did I get here? Money. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so definitely, <laughs> like, I think I think the mm. more aligned I am, the happier I am, the more congruent yeah. I feel in everything I'm doing, the easier it is for sure. And like you said, time mm. time plays a role. Like, let's be honest. Like, time makes you more experienced, more wise, more confident. And, um, and yeah, so that helps as well. Mm. I love that. <laughs> you and I are aligned in so many things, right? We've yeah. we've got the same business mentor. We've got the same kinesiologist. Um, mm. We've got very similar beliefs around money, mindset, strategy, energetics. Both believe in human design. Um, yeah. And so when it comes to growing a sustainable and thriving business, like we both have by the sounds, like how, like what was that journey to recognizing that you actually need all three? Like, I don't know about you, but my personal journey when I first started was like, tell me the how it's all about the strategy. Like just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I I realized along the way that actually no mindset plays a huge role because I'm not going to take action on all this stuff unless I feel like worthy of it and all of that and then I learned about energetics and so forth like I'm Mm. wondering what your journey was to recognizing the power of the combination of the three so it's kind of funny that you say you started in strategy because I feel like I started more in energetics and spirituality and Mm. and I find that within our business the pendulum is always swinging so we're we're going you know maybe too far down strategy that we need to loosen up and we need to go back into energetics and spirituality And I would say that that's been my dance since I started my business. I started so heavily in, you know, energetics and spirituality and I was journaling and manifesting and doing all the things that I forgot about the strategy work. And then I think I swung the other way and I was, you know, very in my masculine, very in go, go, go mode, you know, do, do, do until I was like, hang on, this isn't it. So for me, I'm just, I'm just constantly kind of like tapping, tapping that pendulum back into equilibrium of like, okay, building a business is equal parts strategy, equal parts mindset, equal parts energy and spirituality. Mm. And, and it's a constant dance and I'm, and I'm, you know, I like, I, I almost like to get things wrong because I think I learned so much from being quote unquote wrong or, or do kind of fucking up. That's that's literally how I, how I learn. Um, but you know, in, in my work and in my world, like, you know, I'm obviously working with Ellie Swift, who is very much like strategy based and very much like systems and and marketing, which is amazing. But then I also pair that with working with like energetics coach. So working with Pixie, you know, doing my own um, emotional clearing, you know, journaling and, and manifesting and everything like that. So I don't think I've nailed the process. I don't think I'll ever nail it. I think, as I said, it's this constant dance that I'm happy to do. Like, And I think, as you said so beautifully before, each season of business requires a different level of self. And some seasons of our business require us to be softer and in our feminine. And then others say when we're launching, maybe we need to tap more into that masculine side where it's a little bit more sort of like go, 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 doing energy. Um so I almost see it as this kind of like figure eight where we're sort of like moving and flowing and and sort of dancing between the two and and learning as we go, I suppose. <laughs> mm, definitely. I, I fully agree with all of that. And, you know, I'm so glad that, you know, for, for, for this conversation that you started uh, the opposite to me so we can speak into that, that it doesn't yeah. matter if you're too much in mindset, too much in energy or too much in strategy, it's, it's really that you need all three. So you started with energetics, but you were finding you weren't growing 
mm. without the strategy and I was the other way around like when I realized recognized energetics my whole life changed like that's where I started yeah. doubling and tripling my monthly revenue right and so it really is that combination and and the the uh, having equal parts, as you mentioned, of all three. Like it's a big part of what I teach. Like mm. everything I teach, even something um, as masculine and strategic as like niching or marketing, I make sure to yeah. put in the energetics and the mindset behind it because it's like I can tell you what to do, but if I don't tell you why it's important and how you can do that in a way that's congruent and in yes. alignment with your personality, it's not going to work, is it? Like there are plenty mm -hmm. of people that are in the same programs and don't get the same results. And it's it's because yeah. of the the lack of those three uh, equal the three parts. At so, play. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think it's an interesting one about like, so mindset say, so, you know, for, for years and years, I did affirmations. I did, you know, uh, like, like, a lot of um, talk therapy and all that sort of stuff. And and I, for me, I never found that it moved the dial until yeah. I looped in the energetics work, which was, you know, energy clearing and, and kinesiology clearing. And it's funny because that, the way that you said it was so perfectly, all three need to be in play at once really to kind of level up. But like, so I would, I would know and I would have the awareness around a belief that I need to change. And I would be saying the affirmations, but I think saying it and knowing it is one thing, but energetically, <laughs> somatically moving it is a Feeling whole different it. ball game. Yeah. Feeling it is a whole different ball game. And I'm and I'm like, no wonder this has never moved the dial is because I wasn't actually clearing the energetic stories that my body was holding. And it's like as soon as that piece of the puzzle landed, that's again when I started like, you know, growing my business and actually moving the dial on things. And I was like, this feels like fucking magic. It feels like I'm cheating mm. the system. I'm like, I don't know how. I don't yeah, know how when, people don't know about this. Yeah, exactly. Because we're told, like, when you Google, you know, mindset and all this stuff, you hear about the affirmations, the goal setting yeah. and whatever. But it's just always missing that other part. Like, it's one thing to write a goal. It's another to action it. It's one thing to yeah. say an affirmation. It's another to action it. Like, you can sit there and mm. say, like, I'm attracting a $10,000 per month business. But if you then just don't do anything and watch Netflix all day, it's like, yeah. 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 And, if, and then if you don't feel the energetics piece, if you don't feel worthy of that, so you're just saying yeah. it, that you're missing two pieces of the puzzle here. And so mm. I think it's so important. And thank you for sharing that. It's like that it never works with you. Not because affirmations don't work, but it's like you weren't, you weren't integrating the three. And then when you integrated 100%. it, then it worked. Like you had the habit down pack of, of like being very conscious and aware of like the, the story you were telling and what you were saying. But then when mm. you yeah, felt worthy of it and truly believed it at a deep subconscious level and then acted on it, yeah, that's when it's going to work. And so 100%. that's why I feel like there's a big difference between being in a container or a program or a mastermind and then reading and watching YouTube videos and free blog posts mm -hmm. because it's like mm -hmm. they miss those the, the integration pieces and the pieces of the puzzle. So that's also why I said yeah. different stages of business require different behaviours because when I first started my business, when more of my conditioning was to focus on the fact that it wasn't working and that it was hard and that it wasn't possible, mm. affirmations did play a role. I, I'm not going to sit here and say I repeat affirmations anymore because that part's very natural of being super aware of the stories I tell myself. Like I'm not yeah. going to sit there and say that it's not working because I'm fully aware that if I say that and go down that route, then that will be my reality. And so I don't totally. need to repeat affirmations because it's more natural, but there's other deeper things I'm doing at this different stage in business. So yeah, mm. was, that's, yeah, that's cool. You've shared that experience. Um, Let's let's move on to human design a little bit because you speak about yeah. it a lot. We have different human designs. So <laughs> it's I'm so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a manifesting generator. You are. Are you a projector? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. projector three five. And and I, I say it's funny because like I I have never studied human design as in anything other than just because I'm freaking obsessed with it and I'm interested in it. But like so, projector our strategy right is to um is to wait for the invitation. So even getting the invitation to come on this podcast, I was like, this is really exciting for me. I'm gonna say yes to this. And you know, for example, next week I've I had someone be like, can you speak about human design on the podcast? And I was like, you know that I'm <laughs> not trained in this. I'm like, I can speak from my experience because it's what I love, and I think hands down, human design has been such a pivotal point of like discovering this whole system for me, especially when it comes to business. Um, 
But yeah, for anyone who's listening, I'm a, a um, projector three five emotional authority authority. And um, really human design, as I said, is just like been the turning point for my whole life, really. Do you want me to go into kind of like how I discovered it? And Yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I'm sure there's heaps of people yeah. that don't. So I know it's not like your profession, but from your understanding, what is human mm. design? And then, yeah, go into, would love you to go into that because we have kind of yeah. opposite human designs and yet similar results in business. So we would just yes. have different ways of going about it. So really keen to hear this. So, so tell me your human design again. I'm a manifesting generator. Oh yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What's your, pro- what's your profile? The numbers, do you know? Two for emotional authority. Amazing. Yep. So you're the same as um, Pixie. So Pixie's the two four yes. as well. Yes. Um, so you're very much about like building a community around you and like, yes. you know, you're very much um, like just like learning Lean on the fly. Leaning in totally, yep. but yeah, ne- and network like and community my, is massive. Yes, it's a huge thing. And the biggest takeaway I have from learning human mm. design, like also the, the little I know about it, is that for a manifesting generator, it's so important that things feel like a fuck yes for us. If it's not a fuck yes, yes it's a complete no. And so it's like, I could never interview someone on the podcast if I wasn't like super excited about it. And, but with manifesting generators, when something does feel really good, we lean into it. Hence I reached Mm. out to you and now here we are. Like that's easy for me and natural for me because it felt like I love your energy. We're very in alignment. We've got, like I said, we've got lots of similar mentors and connections mm-hmm. for anyone wondering who pixie is when we reference yes. her it's our <laughs> kinesiologist like yeah, 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 she's not yeah. a fairy <laughs> no well she's a fairy she's practically a fairy <laughs> yeah sure she is she is um but she's so, she's an absolute wizard so so what i kind of like in manjan energy too so say like say i'm going down the street for a coffee i go down the street for a coffee i get my coffee i come home you as a as a man, Jen, you go down the street and you've got the intention of getting a coffee, but you see the beach and you're like, I want to go to the beach. So I'm going to go to the beach. <laughs> and when you're at the beach, you see a friend and your friend's like, do you want to go for coffee? And then you go for coffee. And then they're like, do you want to stay for lunch? And you're, you're constantly following your state of bliss and whatever's lighting you up in the moment. Yeah. Because that's what your energetic path is. And that, and that's like how you're meant to approach things in your world. Um, so I love man gens because like, there's so much energy and you're like, I'm doing podcasting today and I'm building, you know, seven, seven big business. And I'm, I'm also doing seeing- so many things at once and Amazing. I feel completely sane. And then other people yeah. are like, I don't know how the fuck you get things done so quickly and how you're doing that many things, but I thrive Amazing. off it. Like add something yeah. <laughs> you got on my plate. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And, and honestly, like, I think, um, I, I, when I'm so I'm a projector obviously but I'm like I love man gen energy and I try and be a man gen but I'm like I need to go back into my projector way (laughs) I feel like so many people secretly want to be a man of this I know I know (laughs) so so I feel like maybe I'll go back and I'll I'll start about like human design as a general and as I said preface I'm not a human design expert by any means this (laughs) is just my my research into it so I heard a really an amazing analogy about human design the other day so when we're born like imagine imagine the way that we like enter this world and we have got an already programmed tesla that is us and it drives and it's unique and it's authentic and it's doing its thing in the world but then as we grow up we've been told hang on a minute no you need to take control of the wheel you need to fill it up with this certain petrol you need to play this certain music on the radio so as we grow up, we're conditioned, we're programmed to actually move away from our authentic self, which then comes to the part where we realize, hang on a minute, I've I've been driving my Tesla the wrong way. I've been freaking putting it in reverse when I'm meant to be in drive going forward. You know, yes. I've been trying to force park it when it parks itself. So we've been in force mode most of our life going against our authenticity and against against the way that we're meant to energetically show up in the world. So for me, human design is a, it's, it's a, an, a system and a structure to help us kind of find our unique energy, the way we're meant to show up in the world. So it's, you know, equal parts, spirituality, astrology. Um, I think it's like I Ching in there as well. Like there's so many different modalities that have been like put in this one umbrella that gives us each this unique chart, this unique way of, how we're meant to show up in the world. Mm -hmm. And so 
like and there's so many parts into it there's the way that we're meant to respond there's the way we're meant to make decisions there's you know the way that we energetically show up in the world there's so many different aspects to it but um I, I the the bottom line with human design is deconditioning the way we've been told to show up in the world and authentically showing up as us and mm. knowing that that is amazing and enough and perfect so when I discovered human design I was like holy shit I'm like has someone been spying on me I'm like this shit is so real and so legit and I just I felt like when I was reading my human design chart and if anyone wants to do their chart they can just google human design chart and they can do it for free online but it really for the first time in my life I started to see I'm like wow I I knew I was different all along but I'm not meant to be operating how a generator is meant to operate which is abundance of energy you know go 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 I think most people have been told to live like a generator and anything else is not okay or anything else you're broken or wrong. But when I finally gave myself the permission to actually not go at a generator pace and slow down and just be like, okay, I'm not meant to work eight hours a day. I'm not meant to, you know, work corporate really. Like I honestly think working for myself has been the biggest, like just relief of being like, oh, I'm, I don't want to work for anyone else. I can build my own um, schedule around how I'm feeling and what I want to do and all of those things. Um, but yeah, I, a human design is just, I, I, I don't want to say this lightly, but like it has just changed the direction of my life. And, and I think as well, just coming back to like the strategy and what I touched on before being actually invited. So for me as a projector, being invited is the way um, into, into work. So for you inviting me on the podcast, you know, that was my invitation into that. Even starting my business, Blake, Blake invited me into starting my business. He was like, can you create a website? Can you create branding? Which then unfolded into, you know, being booked out in the space of a couple of months. So yeah, human design is pretty special to me. <laughs> Do you feel that this is true? Like this is just something that's coming up for me, but I feel like mm. almost for a projector in particular, finding human design is probably yeah, quote unquote, life changing, as you've mentioned more so than other designs, just because we live in a world that is very much tailored for manifesting generators of like, go, 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 do, do, do work eight plus hours yes. a day, like that's the culture. So I can imagine for you, it's like, that's why you're saying it's so life changing. Does that feel true? Mm, yeah, totally. And I would say even like, so, so you go through, um, the different energy types. So there's obviously generator, man, gen, there's projectors, there's reflectors. Um, did I forget any? I don't um, think so. Manifestors, <laughs> manifestors. Oh, manifestors generator. as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they're different percentages of all the, all the population. But like, so I would say for um, even reflectors, reflectors are like 1% of the population. And yeah. the way they operate is so different compared to, you know, everyone else. Everyone like else. for them to make a decision, they have to wait a whole moon cycle to, you know, to really like land all the pieces of their decision. Mm. And like for them, environment is such a big part part of it it's like they really need to be in the right circles and environment because they reflect whoever they're around so mm -hmm. I, I would say generators are probably and this is obviously a major generalization but probably when they read it they're like oh yeah cool awesome you know um it's still still groundbreaking stuff but I would say for projectors and reflectors and maybe even manifestors that it it has been quite groundbreaking um mm -hmm. and I think another thing for projectors is like uh we have a thing where we can't actually see ourselves. We're incredible at seeing other people. When I say seeing, like fully seeing their soul, their magic, their wisdom, we find it really hard to see ourselves, which is why projectors lean on, you know, astrology, we lean on human design, we lean on gene keys to give us an insight into like a deeper level of ourself. So that's why I think so many projectors either love human design or um, love reading human design or are human design readers because they it's a system that they really understand and that they love and it makes them feel seen yeah I love that so um what uh I have found has really helped me as a manifesting gen like finding out that I'm a manifesting generator is that like to trust myself like if something doesn't mm. feel good actually just trust that like there doesn't have to be some logical reason and if it does yes. feel really good then like you can trust that and go all in on it and so yeah. like for me it's taught me self-trust which is really powerful mm. um before we move on from human design one thing i want to ask you 
is for all the projectors out there, sometimes I hear people use like that Mm. in a negative way of like, I can't show up and lean (laughs) in and do anything because I'm a projector. How do you handle that? Because I know that, you know, you still lean into certain things and do things. You show up fully, you know. So what is, yeah. how would you explain that? So I would say for like the big decisions in life, like, you know, a, a career, you know, moving house, like relationship, like that's when you really lean into that strategy of like fully being invited in. But honestly, like that is, it's still a suggestion. It's not like the only way to live life. And mm. um like the way I've built my business is like I've I've built my Instagram platform. It's not even that big, but it still gets me, you know, shit shitloads of work and you know, I've built a six-figure business off like what a thousand followers. Um your platform and like sharing your magic with the world is really like your magnetism to people to bringing people into your field. So it's like don't wait for being invited, invite yourself into your online space or your digital space, your website, whatever that's going to be. Almost think of it as um, this little birdhouse and you've got all your amazing seeds, you've got all your amazing like food and you're waiting for the birds, aka your clients to come to your birdhouse because you are putting everything up on display and waiting for people to sort of take the bait and come into your world. So I think with any system, like take it with a grain of salt, take what resonates for you. Don't just like rest on your laurels and like be sitting there waiting for the invitation. Like you still need to take action in order for the invitations to come. Mm, What I'm hearing there is like the birds will come, but you have to create the birdhouse. It's like hundred percent and put the freaking seeds out, put an Instagram post out. Like, you know, don't just wait for like, and this is the thing I think that as as um, freeing as human design and astrology and gene keys can be, it's also I think that people can take it the wrong way and they think that it's the only way to do things. It's a suggestion. It's a it's a way that works really well, but also don't use it as an excuse. Don't use it as like, uh, oh, poor me, pity me. I can't like take that because I haven't been invited. Like, And another really key thing for any projectors who are listening is like play with this play with this to your advantage. Like I remember, um, I think it was last year I said, okay, this whole week universe, send me all the invitations that are like, you know, meant for me. And there's, as soon as you shift that lens, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been invited onto this podcast. You know, I've, I've been invited to speak about human design for, you know, the fifth time you start to pick up a few like common threads of invitations that then can help really shape like the trajectory of your work as well. So Mm. if you're a projector, don't rest on your laurels, get yourself out there, build your birdhouse, let the birds come to you. And yeah, this is actually, hold on, this is it. Projectors, this is your invitation. Start sharing your magic more. (laughs) Yes, I love that. You know, I, I fully agree with you. And that's why I wanted to bring that up because as someone who's not a projector or an expert in human design I felt like Mm. I didn't really have a place to kind of say that so I'm glad a projector has now like spoken into that because some of obviously not all of my clients are manifesting generators and like complete go-getters like I am and what comes naturally to me and Mm. I would hate for them to compare and feel like why aren't I like that why isn't it as easy as that and we're all different and I would hate for people to let their personality trait their star sign their human design their Mm. this and that like dictate their entire being in the sense that sometimes I feel like it's easier uh, if you're familiar with NLP, which I'm sure you are because yeah. like, um, but with NLP, it's like they teach this concept of like cause and effect. You want to be mm. at cause, meaning like taking responsibility for things. And whenever you put blame on something external from yourself, you are at effect and mm. then you don't have the power to make the changes. And what I see so many people do, and this is not really a conversation about human design, but more anything in life is it's a lot easier to blame our personality trait or blame the government or blame mm. this or blame that as to why we can't do X, Y, Z to have what we want. And what that does is we we give the power to our human design chart and then we t- we have lost all that power to actually take self-responsibility and power for, for our yep. results in our life when we are the only fucking person that can really do it, right? And so I think it's this 100%. fine line of like <laughs> take what resonates fully go into Mm. it and also make sure you're not at effect of things in your life that's actually stopping you from having what you want because it's so easy it's way easier to blame 
something or someone else for why we can't have what we want. And so if you find yourself going too far down that loop of, I can't yeah. do this because X, Y, Z, then you got to check yourself, you know? hundred <laughs> percent. It's like, use it until, use it as it empowers you. As soon as it disempowers you, like start to like, just take a bit of a bird's eye view about how you're utilizing that system. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. Um, Something I teach my clients is running online events such as like masterclasses, mm. challenges, workshops um, to grow their business. And I've seen you run a couple of these yourself. I'm really curious to hear like, um, and I suppose even as a projector, like what role that has played, like how it supported the growth of your business, how frequently you do it. Like, tell me all the things. Mm, well, I love that you do your online events. I think they look amazing and I can see how many people you attract into this method of coaching, which is amazing. Um, so like my whole business is trial and error. I try things, I, I, you know, tweak and test and do all the things. So I remember I did my first Canva masterclass um, mm. and this is before I was launching into DIY Designer, which was my four-week branding course. And I had, you know, like 40 people or something on the masterclass, which is awesome none of them converted into my, you know, and, and I'm being fully transparent here because I know totally. this is one of your core values and none of them converted into my, um, my course, but also it doesn't mean that that masterclass was redundant because a lot of them actually transferred over into like one-on-one -on -one work, which was more financially viable anyway. So, you know, and then, and I also did another one, um, Oh, when was it? It would have been just before I launched the last DIY designer. And again, I don't think anyone transferred across into the course, but every time I do a masterclass, it uplevels my brand. It also gives me more content to draw from. I've got a free offering I can, you know, uh, use to build my mailing list. So I always think like any avenue you go down in business is not redundant. I think it's going to, one, you're going to gain experience. Two, you might gain a client or two. Um, and then three, you're going to have more content in the bank to then use to build build more people and bring more people into your world. So I'm still working out my model on, on using <laughs> masterclasses and using events, but, um, you know, I definitely find it fun and I love, I love, uh, getting in front of people and, and really like sharing the work that I do. Um, but yeah, you really inspire me to kind of incorporate that more into my business model and just see how it could really shift, shift my world and my work. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, firstly, thank you for being transparent. It's not always fun to say like, hey, I've done something and completely yeah. failed at it. But I'm like you and yeah. um, my failures are my failures. I don't even like the word, but it's been my, it's my greatest teacher. So it's totally. how can you even call it a failure. Yeah. But also from hearing what you're saying, it's like you didn't fail. You still actually signed clients, built authority, built mm. confidence you know, um, and had a more nurtured audience than you did prior to the event. So in, in my eyes, um, whilst you might not have sold specifically into that course, there was a ripple effect of benefits. Mm. And it's, it's, I'm really glad you mentioned that that's what happened, that you got one-on-one -on -one clients because something that happens every time I run an event is I don't just get signups yeah. from that course I'm mentioning. I get signups in all three of my programs. Like people join my it's mastermind amazing. if I'm promoting something else or, you know, they go into different programs and all those things you just said of authority, warmer audience, all of that happens every single time. And so I'm glad you mentioned that because that mm -hmm. is a side benefit because really what the event is doing is it's attracting people into your space. you got people showing up. They learned about you. So maybe they don't need the Canva support right in this minute. Yeah. But when they do, you're the first person they think of because they came to your event or, you know, they, they recognize from your event that, oh, it's not Canva they need help with. It's like they want to work so closely with you. And so maybe that's a mm. tweak in 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 the offering making it more compelling or if you didn't have one-on-one -on -one as an option like I don't know if you referenced it like yeah. in the event that's what can do it sometimes it's like then they were you know put onto something else and so I wouldn't see that mm -hmm. as a failure but I would love to deep dive into your process and see because sometimes it's like tiny little tweaks that make all the yeah. difference in the world. but in my end like the, in my eyes sorry that's that's not even a failure that sounds like no. huge success to be honest because <laughs> like you got you got more money like um totally and, and yeah just was the outcome just looked slightly different than you had anticipated really totally and I think there's two parts that come into play it's like the time piece that I said before like you don't know when these people might circle back into your world you can never you know and I say failure lightly because like I actually love failures because it redirects Same. and we learn from it but it's like these people might come back into your world like you know two or three years later and they watch that one masterclass. so it's like it's so mm. hard to like 
you know, be so rigid in in our ROI on certain events because we don't actually know the longer term impact that event or, you know, that masterclass, whatever it's going to be on our business. We don't know the impact then and there. Um, and, you know, it's all experience. Like we're all, we're always going to learn from like, you know, and that's what I think. I'm like, I'm more than happy to throw myself into anything. Like my business, my life is an experiment. I'm like, I go in, I learn the shit, I evolve. Like that's the constant rinse and repeat process. Mm, I also love how when you shared that you didn't have signups, how neutrally you said that. Like there was no mm. emotion of like this sucks, but I didn't get anyone. Or, like, you just said it so casually. And I think that that's so important because so many people like tie their entire self-worth to whether they reach their goal or not. And it's just like, that's not a yeah. vibe. You learn so much from everything mm. that that you do, which I think is is super important. And another thing I want to share is that like, for example, like I've been following you, your work, your events and things like that. I might not be a paying client right now, but I already know mm. the moment I actually need help with my next brand up level, I already know I'm going to you. And I might not be a paying client of yours right now, but I've like directed people to you as a result of seeing your stuff. And so it's like, you never know, like it just takes one person to see something mm. and think of someone else or have that problem at the right time and place. And then people come out of nowhere. So it's like, there are people that are, that are following you right now that are interested yeah. in your work, but it just needs to be like the timing or whatever the reason totally. is. And I think that's so, so cool. And I literally had a client jump into my inbox would have been like a month ago. She signed up for a, a full website package now, but she's like, I've been following your work and wanting to work work with you since you started this business. And I was like, wow, isn't that a cool sign of like the seeds we're planting today may not, you know, come to fruition for like two or three years down the track. Doesn't mean they're not working. It doesn't mean we need to dig them up and be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Mm. It's like, it's like they are, they are growing, they are brewing, but we need to give them the time to actually like come to fruition. So I just thought for anyone who's like stuck in this, like, oh, nothing I'm doing is working. It's like, it is working. It's like that plateau of latent potential I posted on my Instagram the other day. So many people are doing all the groundwork, feeling like, you know, they're running around in circles, but it's like you've planted the seeds, trust it, let them grow. And like you will see the upward trajectory of your business. You've got to give it time. A hundred percent. Like I couldn't agree with you more. Like the exact same thing has happened to me of like out of nowhere, people like I've been following you for years and I'm like, mm. really? Yeah. Like, or like, you know, I see <laughs> yeah. all your posts and it's like, I have not seen you like or comment once. And it's like, that's because there's a lot mm. of silent followers and watches. And I think that that's so, so cool. And so, um, you know, there yeah. are people that will sign up and that, and I ask them why, cause I've never seen them before. And they say, because of X, Y, Z post or event. I'm like, wow, I would have never it's had no one. And it's just really cool to know that like, yeah, it is working. Things are happening in the background. And the only way you can ever uh, realize that is if you keep going, if you're consistent, you trust totally. the process. So it's really powerful. I love it. <sighs> we have had the best conversation. Yeah. I love all I of I know. These. So <laughs> many like avenues and channels. I'm like, it's so good. I love it. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up today, and I obviously want you to share all of the ways in which people can find you and work with you, but is there anything you feel like we haven't shared or talked about or spoken into enough that you'd like to share with anyone listening right now? Um, I feel like I just really want to celebrate you because like you've literally <laughs> been on such a journey and like, you know, I remember um, like I've, I've been following your work for a while, but I remember when I saw your first post about like making an 80K month and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that is amazing. <laughs> like, you know, I, I just love like. I love people like you who are just like gun ho all in, like, I'm just going to make this work. I'm going to fucking like, you know, live my best life, but also like make this business a success. And I just, I just think you've, you've never shied away from, from what I see from the outside. You've never shied away from like doing the hard work to actually like achieve your dreams. So I just, we haven't celebrated you today. So I would love to celebrate you. Oh, thank you. That that honestly means a lot. And yeah, look, um, you obviously know that I invest in myself through us having very similar mentors and you know I've done yeah. some work with your partner as well like Blake and all of that and everyone's played a role in in so many different ways and something I'm always going to be grateful for so I feel like no one can ever really like say that they succeeded on their own it always takes like an entire tribe and more in order to totally. do so like <laughs> some, the emotional support of my partner my friends my family my mentors mm. you know heavy investments in myself lots of time lots of ups and downs failures 
Oh my Tears, God. Tears, all of the things, all a part of the journey. And, I, and, you know, I really want this podcast to become more and more transparent about the, the darker side or the, the other side of rising because mm. it exists and not many people speak about it. Um, and it absolutely gets easier. Like when I first started my business, I think I cried like every second day. Oh. Now I'm like, <laughs> I feel extremely It's every third grounded. day. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like um, yeah. now I feel, I don't you know, I feel very grounded and regulated like 80% of the time, you know, um, and that just, you know, you just get better if you keep going. So um, I totally. feel like it's important to share that journey, but thank you for saying that. And thank you My so pleasure. much for your time and energy coming on here. I'm so excited for everyone to listen to this and uh, mm. yeah. Tell us about where people can, can find you and how they can work with you. Um, so my business uh, Instagram is figment, F-I-G-M-Y-N-T underscore. Um, and you'll see I've got a few pin posts at the top so you can check out my branding, my website packages. Um, my website is under works. So I'm redoing my website at the moment. So, um, yeah, you can just find me, find me on there. Send me a DM if you want to chat or have any questions about anything we've chatted about today. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> and I've Your also podcast. got my podcast. Yeah. yeah. So I've actually got you coming on the potty, I think next week, which I'm so, I'm so excited, excited about. Yeah. And so that is like all things spirituality, you know, soul, soul's journey. Like I just talk about anything that's lighting me up and it's really going to go down more of a, like a business lens as well. Um, cause that is just something I'm so passionate about as you can probably see. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to chat with you all things next week. I will link uh, your Instagram and your podcast. And if your website is out by the time that this is done, I'll pop that there as well so people can find you. But again, thank you so much, Shani. It's been so nice to chat with you today. My pleasure, Sophia. Good to be here. If you enjoyed this episode, then I want to invite you to join Rise to Six, the mastermind for ambitious rising coaches plus service-based businesses growing their business to consistent $10,000 months and beyond. This is the exact mastermind where I teach you the mindset, strategy, and energetics that have supported me to build a multiple six-figure business in under two years. This mastermind has both a group and one-on-one -on -one component where I basically become I'm your best friend and I'm with you every single step of the way to grow and scale your business. If you are a listener of this podcast, I know you will absolutely love Rise to Six. Click the link in the description to learn more and see if this is the right fit for you. Otherwise, come and DM me on Instagram at Sophia Rose Bernardi. Until then, I will see you in next week's episode.